Hi, this is PDL Bergzerk Arcade at bergzerkarcade.com, and this is part six, I believe, of our uh, 243 series of our catch up. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Unity. There was one thing I actually did forget on our last one, and uh, if we go ahead and drag our character into the scene, I'm just going to drop him there. We can also just work with the prefabs as well, but uh, we're going to have to load him up into the scene to get this done anyway. Uh, if you take a look at the PC script, uh, there's a bunch of things here that we're actually going to need. Now, when we created our empty player, uh, we didn't need these because this one here is not meant to use any of these variables anyway. Uh, but the full character prefab, uh, we do need to use these. And basically all they are is just spots that we're going to be putting uh, different other items on our character. So for instance, uh, when our character goes to wield a sword, uh, we want to make sure that the sword is put into the right spot. And in the case of my character, it's going to be his right hand. Uh, so we want to have uh, basically game objects in our a player structure along his skeleton that tells us where to uh, put these things. Now there's two different ways uh, that you generally do this and one is to basically have uh, an empty game object that we're going to use uh, to attach items to and unattach them from and another way is just to have um, one game object that holds a bunch of different textures and you can just swap those textures out in them. Uh, for a better description, uh, go ahead and take a look at the tutorials covering these that we've done previously. Uh, I'm just going to quickly set mine up. Uh, if I look here, uh, my muscle base one, and I have another character one that I'll have to do as well, which is the fat one, uh, they have the same structure. So they, they have the feet, the pants, the body, the hands, and the head all on one game object here. Uh, but the rest, for instance, if we want to get to the weapon mount, we're going to have to explore down those ones. And the reason why I made them game objects while well, exposed variables over here is usually I just type them in in code, uh, make some sort of constant string somewhere. Uh, but a lot of people are using different models and you know, you can have different paths along the way. And a lot of people are just getting a ton of typos. So I decided just to go ahead and um, make them expose public variables and you can just drag and drop them. So I'm gonna go down, right forearm, right hand, and here's the mountain spot right here where the weapon goes. And as you can see, it's uh, faced a little bit differently for the character. And this is something you're going to want to watch one of the other tutorials for on how to set your weapons up and everything else so that they uh, rotate perfectly and everything for the person's hand. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done is actually just renamed all these. And it really doesn't matter. Uh, what you call it. Uh, the main thing is is being able to access it from the uh, script here. So now anytime in our script when we go to equip something it's going to look for the weapon mount and since we have something assigned now it knows exactly where uh, weapons should be equipped. And we're going to be doing the same thing for the offhand mount which can be used to carry a shield. Uh, hair mount which is going to be used to put your hair on. Uh, helmet mount, which is used to, well, put the helmet on. Uh, character material mesh is the one I'm actually using for the one that switches all the materials. Now, there's a lot of customization you can do through these. Uh, so, uh, I recommend that you actually do go back and watch the tutorial series that we did uh, covering the character customization because there are so many things that we can uh, do in this point and uh, they're going to be different depending on the actual assets you're using. Uh, I'm not going to redo all those tutorials because you know they're already there, uh, but I do want to show uh, the new people you know what exactly are these variables for. So obviously you know the offhand. We'll go ahead and hook that one up too. It's going to be on the left hand and so left arm and left forearm, left hand and right here. Uh, that's my offhand mount. So I'll go back up to there. Actually, I want to rename this. I'm going to call it Offhand Mount. And yeah, we'll go up here and drag it in. Like I said, you can call them whatatever you want. I just like you just have to make sure that they're hooked up to the right way. Now, because I am using the Pro Games assets, they actually come with um, a text document that tells you exactly what each mount point is. Uh, instead of being, you know, like Mount One, Mount Two, Mount Three, you know, and likewise. And of course, you can actually add more along the lines if you want as well. And the way I do this is uh, either in the modeling program, I'll make the mount point there along the spine, 
or I'll actually come in here and let's say I want to put um, an earring spot on this guy. So I'm just going to start off and create an empty game object. I'll reset its position to uh, zero. I'm going to take it and I'm going to call it earring mount. I'm going to go ahead and parent it to our character. Yes, I know I'm losing the prefab. Um, see, I've got the earring mount here. I want to reset it again. I'm also going to reset its rotation. So it's way down there. It's not where I want it. I actually want it up around here where the ear is. And of course, you can just switch into a orthogonal view, but just say roughly right there is the earring mount. Well, obviously, it isn't. It's going to be right about here. But anyway, let's say I had it positioned perfectly on the ear. And you might be like, okay, done, no problem. Um, not really, because during your animations, uh, your head could be moving, and this here won't follow it. Uh, so what you have to do is go ahead and go through the skeleton. And we're going to have to go up to the spine. We're actually going to have to find the head on here. And here we go, the head. We don't need to look at the left arm. I'm just making sure everything else is down. Okay, so we're on the head. This is where you actually want to put that mount spot. And let me see, we have the hair, helmet, and uh, some sort of face. I'd have to look up these mount points to see exactly what they are. But anyway, this is where you'd actually want to drop it. Uh, that way there, as your head moves through, around in the animations, uh, the mount point will follow along with them. So that's how you set your mount points up. I'm not actually going to use an earring mount on this character. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and just set up the rest of my mount points. Uh, we've seen how they're done. If you want more, go ahead and open up the PC script. Uh, actually, they're in the base character script, I believe. We'll just quickly open this up. And as you can see them right here. So you can go ahead and add more or remove the ones that you don't want. Uh, later on, we are going to be switching this over to probably some sort of enumerated array. So we can just keep track of everything inside of uh, one enumeration. Uh, instead of having to constantly add all these different uh, game objects. Uh, but anyway, I've shown you how to create your, your mount points and how to attach them. And that should keep you busy until the next tutorial is up. And make sure after you're done, uh, you reapply to your prefab. And I still have the fat guy to do, which is the exact same as the muscular guy. I'll put a little link down in the doobly-doo where you can actually go and uh, pick up these assets. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.